Almost every night, I make french fries in the oven. About a month into LA's stay-at-home orders, I realized that this munchy habit had become a nightly tradition. Yeah, I bake them. Go ahead, judge me. But this isn't about being in lockdown, stay at home, quarantine, or whatever they're calling it where you're at. This is about how french fries, perspective, and gratitude are helping me welcome moving forward instead of longing to go back to the way things used to be. See, the cool thing about nostalgia is that we can take the best parts, forget the worst, and choose our perspective on everything in between. But in the moment of change, we're in survival mode, just clinging to what we knew, good or bad. When the world got turned upside down in March. All right, all right, all right. Y'all have heard this so many times already. The important part is that life changed in a major way when lockdown started. And all the jokes about making sourdough bread and Zoom birthday parties are so worn out. And yo, why does it feel like Tiger King was years ago? Anyway, things changed, people got scared, myself included. We'd all been used to a certain way of life for a very long time. And good or bad, it was familiar. And it's easy, almost instinctual, to cling on to what we know. But as new routines kind of naturally form from being home all day, every day, I noticed that I would look forward to preheating that oven, and I was the most consistently happy when I was eating those french fries watching a show or a movie. See, this is a big deal for me, because all of my friends that have made it and whatever they do all had the same advice. Appreciate the come up while it's happening because you're gonna miss it when you get to where you're going. So now whenever I recognize those small moments, I pause and physically look around and take it all in. Because someday I know those small moments will be nostalgia. Another example, a couple months ago, my roommate and I were out of work and broke since lockdown. Well more broke since lockdown. And I had this free delivery code from Postmates in my email, so we decided to treat ourselves and order some cheap tacos and nachos. And as we sat there watching Hulu eating those dollar tacos, it hit me. So I paused. And lettuce hanging out of my mouth, I just took a panoramic view of this shitty garage slash man cave that we'd filmed so many YouTube videos in and even just hung out. And I think that time I even said it out loud. This is one of those moments that I'm gonna miss someday. Now no one would fault me for being upset about losing gigs or being so broke that I was treating myself from the dollar menu at Del Taco. But you know what? Times like these are the ones that I didn't appreciate before because I couldn't see it while it was happening. These small shitty moments that I used to wish away I appreciate them so much. So I looked around and I was genuinely grateful for this specific moment in time. It was probably only like 10 seconds long, but it felt like a feature length film. Hey, remember those? Nope, we established we're not doing that. Oh, sorry. It's okay, I know you're just trying to help. So anyway, I was gonna go make some sourdough. Nope, anyway, it's been a couple months since then. And even as early as now, I look back on that piano bench that we used as a table and those soggy nachos. So grateful. I'll have those memories forever. Gratitude has also saved me more than a few times over the past couple of years. A little over two years ago, I started a gratitude journal thanks to the advice of a great therapist, Katie Morton. You should check her out. She's on YouTube. And I'm not gonna claim that it fixes anything, but it sure does help you get through the worst parts of what you're going through and appreciate the best parts even more. And it helped me realize how happy I was to appreciate a moment while it was happening and not just in hindsight. So fast forward, my grandfather passed away on Thanksgiving barely a month after I'd started this gratitude journal. And of course, I was sad. But along with that grief came the thankfulness that he lived to be 101 years old. Yeah, he had a great run. He was a man of God. He always took the stairs instead of an elevator and he bicycled to work every day. And his legacy is so powerful. I see it in my father. And in some ways, me and my brother. That gratitude was there to comfort the grief and just balance everything out. So for the past few weeks, I've been stuck on how to wrap up this video. These are all great thoughts and it's great that I'm getting to express them, but how does that affect you or even me in another era of life? Well, it finally came to me while I was standing in a Barnes and Noble in tears. After my roommate moved out, I decided to try to get groceries myself instead of the delivery service that we've been using since lockdown started. And after I finished my trip to the grocery store, I drove by Barnes and Noble and realized that it was open with safety restrictions, of course. And just to feel human again, I decided to stop and take a quick lap around the bookstore. I had to wait in a short line before going in because in LA they're monitoring how many people can be in an enclosed space. But to be honest, it was kind of surreal. I had not been past my own driveway in months, and though everything looked familiar, the magazine racks were empty, there were six foot markers on the ground, and everyone was wearing masks, thank God. But then I got to the top floor balcony or next to it. Understandably, it was closed due to the pandemic, but looking through the window at the tables and chairs and the view beyond it, 
I broke into tears. See, when me and my roommate first moved to LA, we would do work that we could do from our laptops, like emails and uploading YouTube videos in various places out in the city. And one of the most common was this balcony. There's a meme out there somewhere that's something to the effect of one day as kids, you and your friends played together for the last time and didn't know it. And that's kind of what this was. We had worked on our laptops on that balcony so many times that we didn't realize that the last time would be the last time. And now that will never come back. Even if you can get the same place and get the same people there, it just would never be the same. It's kind of like a kick-ass concert. Once it's over, it's just an empty stage. Now I know that there's a good chance that you think I was crying because I was sad. Not really. They were pretty happy tears. And in fact, it was a cycle of several emotions that I just kind of let work its way through my system. But the majority of it was kind of this balance of grief and gratitude. Now I wish I would have appreciated those moments more while they were happening, but more so, I am so, so, so happy to have those memories. I stood there for maybe 15 or 20 minutes, people walking around, probably wondering what was wrong with me. Maybe they couldn't tell because I was wearing sunglasses and a mouth covering. But when I left and got back into my car, it felt like this big chunk of angst and other emotions just evaporated into thin air. And in my opinion, in this time that the world is changing so much, more of us need to take time to grieve and be grateful for all the small things that will never be the same. The small things that we used to do and took for granted, none of us are too cool to feel those feelings and let them run their course. Right now, there's a lot of arguing and overall mean behavior, and I have to believe that at least part of that is because too many of us are holding back emotions that we should be embracing so we can move forward, both individually and as a society. Things will never be the same, but that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Also, it took me so long to get around to making this video that I don't even make french fries every night anymore. I don't even know when the last time I did that was. But if you like whatever this was, I have a bunch of other videos recorded. I just need to find the motivation to edit them. So subscribe, I guess, when those come along. They're, they're different than this, but they're they're kind of the same. And I'm gonna try to include Lucy. Also, uh, this is Lucy. If you've been watching my Instagram, you've seen plenty of her, but uh, she is the most on vibe with me cat I think I have ever met. And I haven't thought of an outro catchphrase yet. So